predominant proportion in 1981 were ethnic. In that class. In that class. So what a many of that. When a coup took place, all of the quote unquote established indigenous sons and daughters went into hiding. They fled. They make re entry through the Agni corridor. Not because they have they have money, or not because class or wealth or standing. No. They went in. Those guys that went to Tomokongba, they went to Tomokongba, say because we the same people we native, we try to get their advice and they didn't listen. Those guys that went to each one of the PRC members went there on the ground that you know, you know, we the same native people and we be telling these people and they didn't listen. So it was that ethnic thing that gave them the, a chair in a room. When they got in a the room, then they began to slowly play the class card that they get experience, that they educated that they, they get friends, business friends, and all of that. So if you were putting them in order, Agni 1, class 2. But then how would you explain the ascendancy of non-American Liberians or non-Congress to membership in the ruling elite prior to 1980? How, how can one explain that? Say that again. What's the so, question again? As a, how does one then explain the ascendancy of oh. non american Liberians, or in, in other words, indigenous Liberians, to positions of privilege within the ruling class, and with all the uh, perks that went with such positions of privilege. The, the, the way to, to, to capture it is, you recall, say, throughout the 70s, and that's why I was making the, 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 the point yesterday that when you draw the line tight on 79, it poses, a, a it poses some difficulties. That was the reason I was saying that. Between, say, for example, not to bowl you, say from 1960, just watch the evolution, the transition throughout the country. Why, you recall, by 1965, President Todd, President Tottenham with all the uh, uh, open door policy and all of that, they created five new counties. 1965, four new counties, 64. When they created those counties, 64, they they brought in into the living room, Lofa. They brought in Grand Jire, they brought in Bon, and they brought in Nima. Those counties were the in war counties. The, the, the original four or five counties, they were all coastal counties. And when you talk about the interior regulation, it was a way to practicalize the interior regulation issue by Art of Barclay between 1935 and 1940. Then Totmo came. And when Totmo came, the division between the natives and the American Liberian, the division had widened. And the whole effort, there was a calculated effort to close it. And in the process of closing that gap, Tottenham introduced the open door policy to bring in investment. And so, Bummy Hills, Bum Mine, Nima Mountain, and all those things started to come in. By that time, indigenous people were then exhibiting strength by way of maybe their education, you get Jim Y. Babier, you get uh, Harris of Grand, Grand, um, uh, Grand Jire, you talking about Henry Boyma, Famule, the old man, you talk, you know, all of these boys, the indigenous fellows who did well in school, who had the blessing of some, some American Liberian were showing sign. So then you begin, then you, in fact, the whole other piece of extending the rule of uh, central government, they began to talk about um, um, the district commissioner, they began to assign commissioners from Monrovia to different counties, different provinces. And the point I'm making, Mr. Commissioner, is that 
it, it, it have been a gradual effort because they too started to see that the gap between the establishment and the indigenous class were wide and that they were creating insecurity for themselves. So those ones you refer to that got to the top of the system, it was for the security of the ruling class itself. It was not because they were generous. It was strategic. It was tactical on their part. 